Yo, 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 guys. This is your artist soul guard, and welcome to an epic tutorial. Today, you will learn how to draw the most amazing version of Gogeta Blue from the new Dragon Ball Super movie. Therefore, I will use this image as a reference. You can see two versions of Gogeta. I will use both of them to create one amazing Gogeta. I will use the pose from the left one, but the details and the coloring from the right Gogeta. Because in my opinion, the details are making the drawings special. Now let's talk about the materials which we need for this drawing. First of all, we need good quality paper. It has to be Copic paper or blending paper, because we are using Copic markers today. And as you know, they are alcohol based markers and we cannot use them on normal copy paper. But we will come to that later. You also need a pencil of course, and an eraser. These are of your own choice. The materials I am using here are all in my info box, if you want to check it out. We have an A4 size paper here. And to make it very easy for us to draw, we will have the paper at the middle. And then again, we will have it on the horizontal. Now we will add two small guidelines to draw the face very easy. 2 cm on the horizontal and the vertical. These two small lines are very important to draw the perfect symmetric face. So, these are the basics. If you did that, we can start. The best way to draw the face is by starting with the eyes. And as you know, the Saiyans have those wrinkles between the eyebrows when they are looking angry or serious. And those wrinkles look like this. And as you see, we use the guideline to draw that. Now. We will continue with the eyebrows. So, the length of the eyebrow leads a little of the horizontal line, but not much. And the shape of the eyebrow is a little curvy and gets thicker towards the end. We will make another guideline to draw the eyebrows at the same height. We will make it as simple as possible. Very good. Now to the eyes. The eyes of Dragon Ball characters are etched, so we will need only 3 lines to draw the shape of the eyes. And pay attention that the eye part is at the upper half of these guidelines. We will add the pupils closer to the middle, but still at the center of the eyes. And 2 small lines as for the wrinkles on his forehead. Now to the bottom half of the face. The nose will look like a triangle. And just under the nose, we will draw his mouth. We will give Gogeta an arrogant smile, like we saw him in the trailers. And that's already it for the face. We will continue with the face shape. Make a point at where his chin is going to be. And then, we will make another guideline to give his spine the perfect shape. And as you can see, I did the line at the same level with the nose. After that it's easy. We will just connect the points. Then we will draw his one hair strand which is falling down to his face next to his eye. The hair strand is curvy at the beginning but towards the end, it gets edgy and spiky. And we will draw the hairline to complete the face. The ears will be at the same level with the eyes. Sometimes when you're here. 
we will make a guideline here as well so give them ears the same height to finish up the ears we will add some details into it and you almost forgot the marks under the eyes of the saints now we are complete with the face the next starts under the ears but we will come to that later first we will draw his hair the hair of saints are very edgy and spiky start the first smaller hair strand next to the ears and then work your way up towards the top the hair strands are getting bigger and longer As you see, the hair of Gogeta is more wavy than straight. It gives him a more dynamic look. Now to finish up the hair, we will give it a few lines along the hair strands. And as I said at the beginning, the details are making the drawings special. And that's it for the head of Gogeta. Now we can move on to his upper body. First I will make a quick sketch of the torso. That will help us to keep the right proportions. So, as you saw on the reference image, the right arm of Gogeta is raised up and his hand is shaped into a fist. The fist is at the same height as the face. You can orient yourself on that. Now to the details. We will start with the already mentioned fist. The index finger will be at the highest point. On top of all the fingers, we will draw the thumb. And when you do a fist, your finger joints are clearly visible. And each finger has its own joint. And I don't talk about the wheat guys. Just like that. Gogeta has big wristbands which covers almost his entire forearms. <laughs> After that, we will draw the rest of the forearm. When you raise your arm up like this, your elbow will be clearly visible as well. And with the elbow, we are going to draw his upper arm. The bicep will be round and on the top of the upper arm because of that angle. <laughs> We will orient ourselves on the length of the forearm to position the shoulder. Now, along the shoulder and the upper arm, we will draw the weird shaped shoulder pads of the fusion jacket. Now come on guys, the shoulder pads and the collar are very weird shaped. But anyways, we will give the collar the same shape as the shoulder pads. The jacket itself is very short, so orient yourself on the shape of the chest and draw the length of the jacket just under the chest. Perfect, same thing on the other side. Looks very 
very good so far. Now to the chest. The chest will be very muscular and full. To make it look that way, we will draw the chest with curves, not straight lines. The abs of the Dragon Ball characters are very defined, just like the rest of their bodies. However, not the whole belly will be visible because of the belt of Gogeta. Gogeta's belt has a note on the side, and the loop of the belt is a little fluttering. Okay, looking very good. And before we are going to draw the pants, we will draw his left arm, which is more in the background. Remember one thing, every time you start drawing a body part, for example the arm like we do now, draw the shape of it first. That will make it easier for you to draw the details and to keep the right proportions. So the bicep of the left arm will be in front and the hand is shaped into a fist here as well. But this fist is seen more from the other side, so the fingers are more in the foreground. The thumb will be in front, so the other fingers are seen very little. Now to the pants. As I said earlier, we will draw the shape of the pants first. And as you know, the pants of Gogeta are very wide and loose. The legs will be a little apart. Actually, I wanted to do a full body tutorial, but I didn't make it to draw him completely into the size of paper. But anyways, it's close to full body. That's the, way every day. the pants have many and big folds. When you draw them, imagine that the folds are going into the lower leg bands, because they actually are. Just like that. And as far as the paper allows, we will draw his lower leg bands. And that's it guys. Let's take an analytic look at what we produced. Do this every time after you think you're done with the sketch. Sometimes you will see your mistakes just at the second look. But it's fine. This was the hardest part of this tutorial. And you did it. I'm always happy after I have finished the sketch. Because for me, that's the hardest part of the drawing. And that's a difficult pose to draw too. So take your time by drawing this and repeat the sketching part as often as you have to. And as you are done with it, we will move on to the inking. So, for the inking, we need only one pen. 
I like to use the pen from Faber Castell, but you can use a pen from Copic, Statler or any other brand. There is not a huge difference. But what I can recommend is, use a 0.05mm pen. You will work way more accurate and your inking will be way more clean. So try it out. Well, there is actually not very much to say about the inking process. I will show you now a small part of the inking in real time, so you can make your own picture. As you can see, I do the lines very slow and concentrated. I also move the paper all the time, so my hand is relaxed and comfortable during the entire inking process. And that's already the secret to ink perfectly. Just take your time. Okay, the first inking part is done. Now we have to erase all the pencil stuff to have a clear look. The eraser I'm using here is from Pelican. It's a brand from Germany I think. But that does not mean that you have to use the same eraser. I just randomly picked that one. Use any good eraser you can find. As for the erasing, there is actually only one advice which you already know. Do it slow. Because if you do it fast, you are taking a risk to crumble the paper and all of your work was for nothing. That's one reason I like to use thicker paper, because it's way harder to crumble thicker paper. So guys, that's how the inked Gogeta look like. If you follow me longer, you know that I always do a second layer of ink, where I give my drawings thick lines. I love to do them, because these thicker lines gives my drawings a unique look and to do them is really fun for me. But if you want to keep your drawings like that, with just a normal ink version, you can do that of course. Just skip that part until we are at the coloring. For those who want to learn how to make these thicker lines, here we go. Again, 
I will show you a small real-time part. We will use the same 0.05mm pen. And what we do now is to go over all the lines again, but very carefully. Don't overdo it, otherwise it will look bad. And as you see, there is also not a big secret behind these thicker lines. I actually really just go over all the lines. One thing I can tell you is, that the outer edges are thicker than for example, the details of the muscles or the definition of the hair. That's basically the only guideline you have to follow. And yes guys, this is how you do it. It's pretty simple, right? Next milestone, finish with the inking, half time, and as you can see it looks way better that way. Well at least in my opinion. This is how you ink your drawings guys. Just be patient, work slow, move the paper and always bring your hand in a comfortable position during the whole inking process. That's it. But if you have any more questions so far, write them down below in the comments. So I think we are ready to get the comic markers out. So guys, a little info about the Copic markers before we start. Copic markers are alcohol based markers with two tips. One tip is spiky and for smaller areas which are used 99% of the time and the other tip is thicker so you can cover bigger areas easier. You can also refill these markers if they get out of ink. Because these markers are alcohol based, you can blend them very good. That's why these markers are very popular. But to blend them you need the right paper, which is Copic or blending paper. So if you use normal copy paper, your markers are getting dry very fast and you are not able to blend them. So don't waste your time and get good paper, because these markers are expensive as hell. So don't waste any ink. So to find the perfect paper, just check out my info box. They are perfect Amazon links. Ok, we will start with the pens of Gogeta. Therefore we will need 4 different grey tones, C0, C5, C7 and BV29. I will do a darker shading today because it will give Gogeta an epic shiny look later on with the aura. We will use the middle tone which is C5 first. The outer side of the pants are brighter than the inner side, so we will add the shading at the inner part of the pants. We will use the folds of the pants to do the shading. Ok guys, we are done with the first color tone. I will color one leg first, so you know how to do it. Next we will use C0 to color the white areas. Then we will use C7 to do some darker shading. We will use the folds again to do deeper shadings more on the inner part of the pants.
Now we will use the darkest gray tone which is BV29 to add some even darker shading to the pants. We will use this color tone very lightly just to add some more details. Ok great, that's the base. Now we will do the blending. We will use C5 again to blend the color tone with C7. Use the tip like you are stroking. Perfect, just like that. Do this with every color tone to blend the next darker color tone with. And this is how it's supposed to look like guys. It's a little time consuming but not hard to do. We will do the exact same coloring process with the other leg, except the other leg will be even darker, because it's more in the background. Same colors, same way, let's go! So, done with coloring the pants. The darker shading is really nice and it's a beautiful contrast. Now we will use the same colors to color the wristband and the jacket. We will start with the bands. We will do the same process and use the same order of the colors. Again, the left side will be brighter and the right side darker. Perfect, for the jacket we will actually use the same process again. We will leave a big white area at the central of the jacket to give it a nice contrast. We will color the white area with the color tone C0. This time the left side of the jacket will be darker because the arm casts a shadow over the part of the jacket.
Ok great, same for the other side of the jacket. Almost done. Now we will color the left wristband. Again with the same four color tones C0, C5, C7 and BW29. This wristband will be even more darker because it's more in the background. And it looks perfect. Finally we are done using these grey tones. Now we can move on to the more fun colors. Let's color the belt and the lower leg bands. Therefore we need the color tones B00, B24, B29 and B39. We will start with B24 to color the base of the belt. We will leave white parts at the outer edges to color it with B00 later on. Ok, now we will use B29 to give the belt some shading. We will use the folds of the belt to do them. And as you can see, the shading of the belt is more on the inner side. Perfect. Now we will use the darkest blue tone B39 to give the belt some small dark highlights and to increase the contrast. Just like that. For the blending, we will use the same technique as with the grey tones. We will use a brighter color tone to blend it with the next darker color tone. Just a few strokes with the marker are perfectly enough to do that. And this is how it looks like guys. I really like it so far. And now we will use the same colors with the same order of color tones to color the lower leg bands. Great, just how we want it. Now to the jacket. For the shoulder pads and the color we need only three color tones which are Y11, Y28 and W7. I will show you now how to color an entire shoulder pad so you can see how to do it. We will start with Y11 to color the base but we will leave some white areas at the central of the shoulder pads. These white areas increases the contrast enormously. After that we will use Y28 to give it nice shadows. To do the shadows we will use the edges of the shoulder pad. Just like that. Now we will use the darker color tone W7 to give it some highlights. Just use this color tone along the edges very carefully.
Perfect. Now some blending to complete the coloring of the shoulder pads. And by the way, does anybody know why his jacket is yellow instead of orange, like in Dragon Ball Z? Amazing, it's coming into life guys. Now we will do the exact same thing for the rest of the jacket. You know how it goes. Let's go! Okay, great. We are done with coloring the clothes of Gogeta. Let's move on to the maybe most important part of the coloring, the skin. Therefore, we need three different color tones, which are E21, E57 and E29. We will color the right arm first. Use E21 to color the entire arm with. Just leave some small white areas on the muscles. Okay, now we will use E57 to do the first part of the shading. We will use the edges of the joints and the muscles to add the shading. A big dark shadow on the bicep and almost the entire shoulder will be covered with a shadow because of that high stretched fist. We will use the joints of the fist to add some small shadows into it. And to finish it up, we will add some shadows on the fingers as well. Okay great, now to the darkest skin tone. Take the E29 color tone and go along the shading we already did. Just add some highlights to increase the contrast. I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. 
Just like that. We will do the blending very carefully here because the skin is already pretty dark because of the shading. Just use the brightest color tone E21 to blend the colors a little. Okay, but this is not the finished skin color guys, but we will come to that later. Let's color the rest of the body first. It's actually the same process. Just leave some white areas on the muscles, add some shading with E57 and then increase the contrast with E29 by adding some specific highlights at the edges. So, it's looking very good so far guys. Now pay attention that the right arm has to be darker than the rest of the body because it's more in the background. But I'm sure that you thought about that. Okay guys, that's how the skin looked like right now. Now I will show you a technique which will make the skin stand out. We will use a lively brown colored pencil to recolor the shading which we did with the color tone E57. The color pencil I use here is from Faber Castell. The number is PC944. Let me show you how to do it. We will go over the shading parts very lightly. We will do many light layers until we have covered the entire shading parts. The contrast will be amazing and the skin will totally stand out. Do this on the entire body and do it lightly.
pushing it away Leave behind your own deception I learned to live another day There's a universe inside you Your galaxy of happiness I just wanna help you find it We'll explore in baby steps There's a universe inside you You've gotta give it room to breathe so let the universe excite you Cause that's the way it's meant to be There's a universe inside you So won't you wake up now and see Don't hide away the things you're feeling Unlock your mind and lose the key there's a universe inside you You should never have to hide I can see the stars inside you Please just open up your eyes Okay guys, we are almost done. Let's cover the last part of the fist and then we will take a look at what we did. I think you can see the huge difference. The skin really stands out. It will look much better with the aura later on. Now let's do the same thing for the face. Start with the color tone E21 to cover the entire face, except of little white areas on the cheeks. There's a universe inside you. So much more than people know. Then we will use E57 for the shading. Gogeta will have a big shadow on his forehead and under his eyes, which will make his eyes stand out. Stop the path of devastation. You should live for all the high. Again some specific highlights with E29 and then we will take the brown color pencil and add some light layers on the shaded parts. Perfect, now we will do some little blending with E21 and then we are finished with this skin. There's a universe inside you Why are you pushing it away? Leave behind your own deception And learn to live in We did it guys, and it looks perfect. Gogeta never looked this good before. But to make him look even better, we will color his hair in blue. Therefore we need three blue tones which are B02, B05 and B29. First, add some shading to his eyes with BV31. Then we will color his eyes and eyebrows. Use B02 for the base and then add some small shading with B05. After that we will blend these two colors with B02 to finish it up. Perfect, let's move on to the hair. Use B02 to color the entire hair. Then we will use B05 to give it big shadings. To do the shading on the hair, we will use the hair lines. They will help us to place the shades.
as you see, we did really big shadows on the hair. That's for the contrast. Now we will use B29 to add some small highlights along the hairlines to increase the contrast even more, but very lightly and little. Just like that. But we are not done with the hair yet. We will take another color pencil and we are going to do the same thing as for the skin. We will color the B05 shading part. Therefore we will use the color pencil with the number PC903. What we are going to do is basically the same thing as for the skin. We will add some light but many layers on the middle blue part to make it stand out. Let me show you. So, now we are done with coloring Gogeta. I have to say it looks very cool. And as I said, the shading makes it look very different and the colors really stand out. We are done with coloring Gogeta, but we are not done with the drawing guys. We will give him an epic and big aura to make him look even more powerful. For the aura, we will need only one color pencil, which has the number PC992. All the color pencils I used here are from Faber Castell. So let's draw the shape of the aura. I will do it like the more older style of Dragon Ball Z auras, which are for me way better. I will give the aura a more fire-like shape. Okay, now we will add many many light layers. This will take some time, so be patient. The outer part of the aura will be way stronger and colorful than the inner part of the aura. Therefore, you just need to do some more light layers at the outer part to make the color more powerful. And towards Gogeta, the aura gets lighter. <laughs> done with the one side of the aura and I have to say I love it. I usually do the aura completely different but I like this version actually way more. You guys told me so often that I should use color pencils instead of markers to draw the aura and you were right. I should have listened to you earlier but anyways we will do the same process now for the other side and remember towards Gogeta the aura it's getting lighter so add more layers on the outer part. 
so it will look more powerful. We are almost done guys, let's go go go! Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I'm in love with my own work. If you want, you can add a darker blue tone on the outer side of the aura to give it more contrast. I actually like it that way, so I will keep it like that. But to give it more details and highlights, I will use a white gale pen to add some dots all around the aura and around Kojita. I will not overdo it, just adding some dots here and there. <laughs> One last dot right there and then we are officially done. What the hell? I feel like I was working on this tutorial my whole life. It feels like I missed my entire 20s. But look at that. What an amazing drawing. I am really really happy with it and let's sign this piece of art like a real artist and then I can call this done. How do you like this drawing guys? If you like it, don't leave this video without giving it a big thumb up. That way you support this channel and you support my work. And also share this video with a friend who would love to learn how to draw. And let me know down below in the comments if you have any more questions and also let me know down below on which character you want to see a tutorial next. One last thing I have to tell you which is self evident, subscribe if you haven't already. I am like a drawing beast at the moment and I upload 3 videos a week, so don't miss them and hit the subscribe button. That's it guys, I'm out, thank you for watching and I see you very soon. Until then, stay healthy, stay fit, be a good person, be you and always remember, you are the designer of your own life.